Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at CrossFit Auto Body, located in Union City. CrossFit Auto Body is the perfect place to begin your fitness journey. Come in and become part of the CrossFit community. Visit uccrossfitautobody.com for more information. Today's episode is a sweet treat. Scott sits down with Anna Edmiston, who is the owner of Tiny Baker in downtown Union City. She has a passion for everything sweet and has a backstory that will inspire anyone who wants to pursue their dreams. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Scott Williams, host of Real Foot Forward, where every single week we celebrate our little section of the South. And just like here at our museum in Heritage Park, we explore the culture, the spirit, the amazing accomplishments, and the heritage of the people of West Tennessee. I have such a sweet guest here for this episode, Anna Edmiston, chef extraordinaire, and she is the head cook, head decorator, head delivery driver, head businesswoman at Tiny Baker. And so we're going to find out all about what her life is like. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Uh, Before we talk about the past, tell me a little bit about your bakery. Okay. um, Well, bakery is family owned. Um, Luckily enough, I have an amazing family who comes in and does everything that I need them to do. And who in your family is involved in the bakery? It's uh, me, my old, one of my older sisters. Uh, She is our, uh, our, I guess you can say our money person. She deals with all financial status of everything. And she's our little, uh, our runner as well. Um, not only that, but we also have my mom. Um, she's the baker. She's the big wig of the family. She's the one who makes everything taste great. Uh, we did have my dad. My dad was the uh, financial guru of everything, but he did pass of cancer uh, a few months ago. So, And so you yourself, so did, did you grow up in the bakery business? Have they always been bakers? or? <laughs> um, well, my grandmother actually uh, was a big baker. She was the one that you would wake up on Sunday mornings and she would have all the desserts and all the snacks and stuff like that made up for Sunday dinner. Um, so I helped her a lot with that, um, but I actually didn't want to go into the baking business until senior year. Um, just because I wanted to be a music major, but figured out that that's not what God wanted me to do. So that's how I ended up in the baking business. And so are you, is that local? Are you local when all this is happening? You're here in Union City or where are you? Uh, you mean as in like... Yeah, when you were little, where did you oh, grow okay. up? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I kind of grew up a little bit of everywhere. Um, my family was missionaries overseas and stuff like that. So I didn't come back until I was about nine. What um, country? Oh, we, uh, I was adopted in Guatemala and then we moved to Russia, Germany. And then we had a little, um, uh, places we went to in between there, like Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Panama, uh, stuff like that before we moved back to Tennessee, which is where my dad's family originated from. So that's why we ended up here. Well, that's interesting. So you had quite an international um, upbringing in the early years. Definitely, definitely. That's how uh, my sweets, actually. I'm, I'm addicted to food and trying food in different places. So um, that's basically how I got into um, discovering different foods and different pastries and stuff like that. Don't you think we need a Thai restaurant here in Union City? We do. Oh, Why don't you I and miss I put our Thai. resources together and see if we could beg somebody yeah, to come Yes, so I got to figure out all my people to see if I can get them here. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I love Thai food. So, um, so w- at what age did you move here to Union City? I was nine when we officially moved back. We were back and forth in between mission trips here in Union City, but um, I officially moved back here when I was in third grade, so I was about nine. And even at that, even at that young age, you liked uh, trying international foods and different. Foods yes, and- yes. We, uh, my mom makes a lot of different international foods that we picked up, like pepion from Guatemala or borscht from Russia, uh, breads from Russia. Germany was a lot of like chocolate that we discovered. So um, I'm very internationally uh, food cultured, which is terrible for my husband because he hates trying new things. And so when I cook, he kind of sneers at it, but he does try it at least for me. Is he from here? Yeah, uh, we actually graduated together in high school. Um, We were friends in high school and then we just kind of rekindled our friendship. Um, He actually works in Mayfield for the Republic uh, Services as a welder slash uh, mechanic. So 
And so you love to cook. Your senior year, you d- d- discovered that you like to cook, or how did that come? How did that come about? Yeah, it actually came about how um, I actually hate ACTs. Uh, I'm not good under pressure when it comes to testing, so my ACT score wasn't the best ever. Um, so I ended up watching Cake Boss and like the Sweet Treats channel and stuff like that, and literally was just on the couch. And one day, I was just like what if I do that? What if that's what I need to do in my life? And of course, mom was like, that's a great idea. And of course, dad's in the background just kind of like, I knew you should do that in the beginning. It's like, thanks dad for the guidance. Like, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> but, but see, yeah. if he had told you at the beginning, you probably would have not done it. I probably would have just like yeah. waved it off yeah, and not have done it. We dads know it's better to let things naturally happen. Yes, which is terrible because mom is always, the, moms are usually the ones that are like, you need to do this so we can make sure you do this. And dad's like, she can wing it. It'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. So, so you, so you decided uh, you were going to pursue cooking, baking. What, what did you? What was your next step? Yeah. Uh, so, I ended up joining the culinary classes at Obine County Central with uh, Miss Bruner and Miss Amy and them. They were my uh, Miss Bruner was amazing. She helped me with everything. I ended up being kind of a top student in the class. And this is your senior year. Yes. Okay. And what kind of program do they have? I'm not that familiar with their program. Yeah, uh, their program isn't really big, just because a lot of of cooking programs or extracurricular activities such as cooking or home ec aren't as established here as, of course, I would like them to be. But they t- taught you basics of cooking or restauranteering with uh, napkins and plate settings and stuff like that. So you at least knew the basics of everything, but it really didn't go into as much detail as I would have liked it to go into. Right. Well, and with this whole area being very uh, tourism, headed in a tourism direction, hospitality is really an important oh, y- um, definitely, area. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, you can look at every corner here in Union City and see fast food restaurants or a sit down restaurant like Musto's or Scott's Grill and stuff like that. It's a or big- Yomata. Oh, yo, oh, yes, definitely Yomata. They're, they're definitely a, a big food industry around here that we honestly need the basics for for people. Right, and the Thai restaurant that you and I are going to— Yes, it's going to happen, get, guys. Yeah. It really is. Um, and so uh, high school, you got into this. You did really well. You you clicked um, with it. And then um, where, where did you go when you graduated? <laughs> That's actually a very bumpy ride from that point on. Um, I actually was accepted into the University of Lake Cordon Bleu in St. Louis. Um, I was accepted there, but they ended up closing all of their United States schooling. Oh. Yeah. Um, then I was like, oh my goodness, what am I supposed to do now? So I ended up applying to the Art Institute of St. Louis uh, just because I, I thought I was supposed to be in St. Louis. That is where I thought uh, God wanted me to be with my uh, upbringing. That's, um, I'm, I'm Lutheran, so that's like the hub of Lutherans there. So I tried to, I was thinking that's where I needed to go. Well, come to find out, they got hit with a $11 billion financial aid lawsuit. Mm. Um, so we ended up backing off of that completely. Well, at that point, um, colleges weren't accepting anything. Colleges were done accepting students were closed. And of course, I knew I was supposed to go to college after um, high school because that's what I was, you know, parents are like, you need to go to college after. So um, my brother, who's, who was a Marine, and his wife lived in, Cabot, Arkansas. And they were like, well, there's a culinary school up here if you want to check that out. Well, of course, they said that before I applied to the first two colleges, but I just waved it off because I didn't know the name of it. Um, So I ended up applying for the uh, Pulaski Tech, uh, University of Arkansas Pulaski Technical College in Little Rock, Arkansas. And luckily enough, I was able to be accepted there. And um, it ended up being the greatest blessing in the world for me. Well, what was it like? Tell 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 me about it, because I didn't get to go to culinary school. So yeah, what? it was stressful. Um, we had a uh, six hour long classes. Uh, wow. Yeah, uh, six hour long classes. Uh, they don't have dorms or anything like that. Um, which, luckily enough, I had amazing parents who saved a college fund for me. So uh, they paid everything in full for me from apartment to uh, utilities to the classes and everything like that. As long, of course, we had stipulations as you have to make A's and B's and can't fail anything. Um, So I ended up being there for two years, um, which is awesome. Um, The classes were really small, which gave you a good one-on-one, I guess, connection with your instructors, which is how I got my first job and actually second job in Little Rock actually was at Kilwins in Little Rock, um, which is a like a confectioner slash ice cream place. So I actually did work there with the candies for a little bit. But um, one of my instructors, uh, Miss Jan Lewandowski, 
she uh, was an instructor there and she recognized my skill. Apparently I was pretty good at what I was doing. And um, she offered me a job at her hers and her husband's bakery, which is the Blue Cake Company. Um, and that ended up being the second best uh, bakery in Arkansas. Now, now, you did you specialize like in pastries and, and cakes and desserts and that's your area of expertise? Yeah, I was going to do a double major um, with uh, culinary, I mean, as in uh, pastry and savory, but I ended up just picking pastry because uh, my college fund wasn't fully funded for all of that. So I decided to pick one. And if I wanted to go back to get uh, another degree, I would. Um, so I did just focus on uh, baking and pastry because I figured out that that is what I, I like precise things better than just throwing things together in a pot. Um, I like measurements, precise measurements and um, precise decoration and stuff like that. How long were you working for them in Arkansas before you ended up coming back home? Um, I was there for about two years. Um, I stayed in Little Rock for two years. It was a great experience. Um it was a bigger city than Union City, so I had like a Starbucks on every corner, so I wasn't used to that. Um, so it was a it was a big life changing moment because my uh, brother lived about forty five minutes away from me, and they had their own family who were involved in athletics and everything, so I didn't get to see them much. Um, so it got a little bit difficult family wise because the rest of my family was here in Union City, but mostly with uh, I kept busy with school and work because I was working 40 hours a week, plus I was going to school 40 hours a week. So it was uh, very, I guess, time-consuming with work and school and everything. So, And so was there a moment at which you decided to come back? Uh, yeah, um, there wasn't really like a moment where it was like, oh, I'm moving back. Um, it was mostly uh, kind of a fight to get me back here, honestly. Not saying anything about Union City or Troy, it's just I grew up here, so I wanted out of Union City and Troy to you know, branch on my own to a bigger city and stuff. But I ended up fighting it um, really hard because I didn't want to come back here. That was my goal was to get out of here and do something bigger, better and stuff like that, that you always think you're supposed to do. Um, no, I fought super hard to not come back. Ended up not, I loved my job. Great experience was not the right setting that I needed to be in. Um, I miss my family. Church was great, but it wasn't like my home church with my dad or anything because my dad was a preacher. Friends, I uh, didn't make a lot of friends just because I worked all the time, went to school all the time, and the culinary school is based around your job. So you pick your classes at whatever time you want to go to accommodate for your lifestyle of working. Um, so I didn't make a lot of friends. Um, I made one best friend, which her name's Rachel. She's like the bomb dot com. So. Shout out, shout out to yeah, Rachel. Shout out to Rachel for being awesome. Um, but she ended up getting married and everything. So, uh, so Rachel was busy. Yeah, Rachel was busy. So yeah. it was just kind of me. Um, it got to the point I traveled back to Union City every weekend because I had nothing to do. Um, and of and course, to drive from Little Rock to Union it's City. It's four hours. Four hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's so, a long drive it to is do long, every weekend. Yeah, it was. It got to the point that um, I did have like a mental breakdown at the end of everything because it was just like I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Well, luckily enough, my mom and my dad are amazing people and support me so much that I can't even explain how much they mean to me. Um Mom was like, well, she always wanted to open up a restaurant or something. And, and what were they doing at that point? During the two of them, of yeah. Were they? Did they have a bakery or a restaurant? Or no, they. What were they doing? Uh, my mom was a nurse, okay. um, and then my dad owns Esperanza Enterprises, okay. which is a rental business. Um, he named it after me with his best friend. I call him Uncle Ellis because that's how close he is to our family. Okay. Um, they, and what did they? What, what rental? What did they rent? Houses. Okay. Mm -hmm, to gotcha. just rental houses around, uh, just to. He, he wanted to start a business from the bottom up, so that's what he did. Okay. Um, so they were doing this, which mom was retired at that point. Um, my mom is 61-ish. Okay. She's young. She's very young. She's very young. Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And dad was uh, 70 at the time. Okay. Um, so dad was super scared because he was like, I'm 70. Like, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to start it up? But and so they said, so, so they knew that they had a talented daughter who was mm -hmm. successful at, at, uh, working in baked goods and cakes. And so they said, let's, let's start a bakery. Yeah. Basically it, we had a lot of prayer in it. Um, it was like, I made a uh, 4.0 straight A's through my entire college. Um, my, I say career because it felt like a career. Um, but yeah, it was basically kind of like I wanted to, mom loves baking. She loves baking entirely 
like, and she was at home, she's retired. And so she had nothing to do. And dad, dad just, uh, sold out his, uh, rental business. So he was sitting at home with nothing to do. So we were just kind of like, well, why don't we pray about it and see if this is what we want? Um, at that point we prayed super hard and we found our location on first street, which was in itself lucky just because of the fact that, uh, at the time, Station Burger, which was next door, which is now Scott's Grill, um, they were looking at buying that uh, building next door to expand. But um, with prayer and everything, we were able to get in there and um, get our location that we have. You must have said, what are we going to call this thing? Yeah, we uh, we actually like thought about numerous different, I guess you could say titles for our bakery or just name of it. And we we're sitting around and we were thinking of like the small bakery, the small, like, like tiny, uh, like house or something like that. We were thinking of stupid things. Well, and then I think all of us together were like, well, what about tiny baker? And I was like, well, why tiny baker? I don't understand. Well, with you, not a lot of people can see me, but I'm like five, one and super short. And, um, I get mistaken for being 12 all the time. So, uh, dad was like, that's perfect. That is the perfect name. So we sketched out our logo and everything and came up with tiny baker and Rachel being awesome. Like she is, uh, she shout out, Rachel. Shout out to Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, uh, and put it into a digital form, which ended up being our logo. And so, uh, what all goes into? I don't, I don't even know when you're going to start a. But it wasn't. Was it? Did it have? It obviously, it had a kitchen because no, no kitchen, no kitchen. So no it's just nothing. a big room. Just a big, big, a big long room. We had to put in sinks. We had to put in. Uh, luckily enough, there were two bathrooms in back. One of them were, wasn't working, so we actually had to go into that, which comes to Uncle Ellis, which because he's a plumber and my dad is a all around person because of the rental business. Um, so they ended up, um, getting into all of the plumbing and work and electric. And, uh, we ended up basically planning out all of this, which you have to have certain certifications to be able to do everything. We had to go through, um, health inspections once we were done putting in the freezers and everything like that. So it was a lot of work, a lot of legal stuff that I honestly had no idea went into the whole baking business until we actually like went started and went. Uh, was somebody it. helping you or did you no, have any well, guidance or were you Googling? Uh, luckily enough, uh, my dad is uh, an accountant, an amazing person. He's like an all around, just, he knows almost everything. So he knew where to start because he started his rental business. So um, he started there and we literally just kind of went to the um, health, uh, what is it called? The health inspector place. I forget what the it's called. Health department. Health department. There we go. Yeah. yeah. That place. Yeah. Um, and we kind of asked them what the um, what all we needed to reach the certain certifications we needed. So we made sure we did that. Luckily enough, we have Stan, which is amazing. He's our uh, health inspector, and he helped us along the way to be able to get um, to where we are today. So how did you put together a business plan, or how you know how do you know before you've even started how many people in Union City and the surrounding areas need cakes and pastries and and you're really famous for your petty fours, I believe. Yes, yes, petty fours. Um, honestly, uh, Blue Cake Company actually helped me. Um, they helped me to learn the basics for everything. And I also had a business management class that I attended um, that I had to take to get my uh, degree in baking and pastry. Um, so uh, I basically had a basics of it. Um, but we had to literally put down on paper everything as into like how much money you think we're going to do, which dad's an accountant. So he's, sure. uh, he was honestly during the beginning, the main person we went to with everything, um, financial wise, because he, he, he's a penny pincher. I, I love him to death. It's funny how when you're little, you hate it when he does stuff like that. But then later on, you realize that it does make a difference in the future. Well, so, um, you, was there already a bakery? Um, on, it's called First Street, but it's really the main drive. Main, yeah, so yeah. it's First Street, it's, Main Street, whatever people call it. Was there any other it. bakeries? Um, no, what I heard of was that there was a bakery where the old Scott's Grill was um, years ago, um, but I don't know exactly how long they went, but they were just specifically cupcakes. Okay. Um, but um, there was sweet, there is Sweet Tooth in Union City that still, uh, sorry, Troy, Sweet Tooth in Troy that still does uh cakes and uh, cookies and stuff like that. But there really wasn't a 
like established bakery, specifically bakery in um, Union City, except for, you know, Walmart and E.W. James. Well, so uh, so you get your get, how long did it take you from the moment you said yes to do this until you had your opening day? How long was it? OK, let's see. Opening day was two days before Valentine's Day. So, oh, that's mm-hmm. a good time to open mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. sweets so we, related. Yes, so we decided we were open two days before that. So we had everything established. We had let's see, January was when we officially um, started working on everything because we had to get um, insurance on the building. Oh, that's quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it was. Very quick. It was. We had a lot of coffee nights. <laughs> I bet you did. So, did you already know that you were good at petty force? Yeah, um, that's sort of your yeah. thing. I wouldn't say that. I, Blue K Company is um, in Little Rock did Pedophores as well. Okay. So I knew Pedophores went well in Little Rock, but it was kind of like, well, would they go well here in Union City? You can eat them in like two bites. You can. They're, they're super they're small. Delicious. They're super full of sugar. It's great. It's a great quick treat that you can get. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I get one every time I walk by there, I run in and grab one. <laughs> um, and um, so you, w- when you were going to school and when you were planning a bakery, did, were you already uh, as good at decorating as you are? Because now you're great at decorating cakes as well. From I mean, I follow you on social media, so I see all the cakes that you do. Yeah, um, I was. I ended up winning a lot of competitions that we had in Little Rock. Um, one of them was the Sugar Art Show in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, it was for one of our classes, one of our finals for that day. I made a Alice in Wonderland cake. It was made from foam, and it took me hours to make this cake. Um, it was my first competition I ever um, went into. Of course, I was nervous as all get out because I don't like competition. Um, yes, I'm pretty good at it when I get into it, but I do not like putting myself in that position. Um, but no, I ended up winning first place for a uh, beginner baking, beginner decorator and everything like that. And then, and it's, what's interesting is, so you, you first had the idea when you were laying on the couch watching TV and you saw that TV show cake, what's the name of the cake boss. Cake boss. <laughs> yeah. You saw that and then go full circle. And now you're mm-hmm. the cake boss. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not as good as he is, which luckily enough, like mom likes all the, I, I love challenging cakes. Um, we just did a 3D truck the other day and we've done a realistic bulldog. We've done Pete the Dragon 3D. Um, we've done a lot of cakes that. You did my daughter's Yes, uh, I did your daughter with, with uh, You did a with great job with that cat on there. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um, so I saw a, a Halloween cake you did the other day. I guess there, is there a birthday? Um, it was, a, it was, uh, I know we did an Adam's family one and yeah, then Maybe that's did. what I noticed. And then we did a uh, like a horror film cake as well that had Jason and um, I remember Michael that Myers. Yeah. And what's your What's your favorite cake of all the cakes you've done? Oh my goodness! Um, there have been so many cakes that I've done in my life. Honestly, we've done thousands of cakes since then. I think we figured out that we actually did over nine hundred and eighty nine ish dozen cookies in one month. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So it was just, it was crazy. Um, honestly, any of the challenging cakes, um, any ones that I'm able to have uh, creative freedom with. So probably the truck one. It was a 3D one where you, the, you could literally stick your hand underneath the truck because it was. Um, off of the board, that was a pretty fun one because I've never done one like that. So we need to get you on. Isn't there like a cake competition show? <laughs> where you said you don't like competition, but I think you could win. Um, there's one one where people compete. Who are, um, I've thought about it. Um, I have. I've thought about it, um, but I do not like putting myself into competitions. Right. Um, well, what if we get you into one? If you get um, me into one. Would you talk about Discovery Park of America if you get on it? If we <laughs> yeah, get something there? like Discovery Park of America was the reason I ended up being here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, See? guys. I yeah, appreciate it. Like, <laughs> well, I'm going to try to enter you in one. So how are things going? Is the business everything you hoped it would be? Are there areas you hope to grow? Oh, my goodness. The business has been amazing. It, it was – it's – bloomed and blossomed so much more than I ever thought it would be. Um, don't get me wrong, Union City, I've, I've, I'm, I'm from Troy, so I went to Obion County instead of Union City. So I really didn't have a lot of experience with Union City, um, except for the fact I came here to shop at Walmart. That was really it. Um, so I wasn't sure how the uh, people basis was going to be with a new bakery and stuff like that. So uh, when we opened, it just boomed amazingly. Um, now, and how long has it been? How long has it been open now? Uh, we're at a year and a half, over a year and a half so now. So it's still pretty new still. Mm-hmm. So uh, February 12th is going to be the 
a two-year mark for everything. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Thank you. We're and, super excited. And it's going well? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, we are, uh, we're in the growing process where we're um, not quite sure if we want to grow yet or we need to grow yet financially. It's one of those middle points where you're like, should we do it? Should we not do it? Should we wait? Um, because at this point, we, we are actually turning down um, cake orders just for the fact that we are getting super stocked. Because uh, last weekend we we had six weddings. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that didn't even include the regular birthdays or events. Um, so now, like at the beginning, we started with me on the weekends. I would get maybe seven cakes for Friday and Saturday. And now I'm up to probably 20 to 30 cakes for Friday and Saturday that we have to do. Goodness, that's <laughs> a ton of cakes. And so do, you, so do you do your own delivery and everything? Or do yeah. you have – so – that's just what scares me. Like when you put it, are you ever afraid you're going to like take the corner too, too sharp and have the cake huh. completely crash? Oh yeah. Well, I'm not going to mention names of this wedding that we did because my husband was driving. I trust him with my life. I will never trust him with a cake again after this delivery. Oh, did it smush? <laughs> it, it smushed one side of it. It wasn't super bad, but like we got into it just a little bit just because I was because <laughs> he took a corner to to. Right. Fast, so when you got a cake. You got to go really. Yeah, really, we got to go really uh, slow. So, and when you, how do you? When I picked up my cake, I picked my cake up, and and I think it was your mom said mm-hmm. that you were out delivering. You know, you had a ton of cakes to deliver. That yeah, day. Um, time management. It's really all about uh, managing everything and making sure you have um, all your orders set to where you're ready to go out. So uh, let's say you have an order going out at one, but it's in uh, Milan. You have to leave an hour early. So if you have a cake. Uh, another wedding coming, you have to make sure you at least have an hour to an hour and a half after that because it takes about an hour and you have to set up flowers. You got to set up uh, toppers. You got to make sure everything is set up for them. So you have to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room to be able to do everything. And luckily enough, um, I'm very picky about my cakes. So I like doing wedding cakes myself. Um, but um, luckily enough, I have my mom and my sister to go on like, cause there was a wedding here at Discovery Park um, last weekend um, that we delivered to. So we ended up um, I saw that cake. Up. It was very pretty. No, thank you. You do it all yourself. You deliver. You're decorating. You're definitely probably not working ten to four. Oh no no no. Um, we've been able to manage everything. Luckily enough, I have amazing family. Um, my brother moved back with his family, so my sister in law's here. Um, my other sisters, like our whole, I have three. Uh, two sisters and a brother, uh, plus my sister-in-law that are here as well. Um, so honestly, whenever we have a crunch in anything, um, we call them because it's like when the soybean festival happened, we had 34 dozen cookies that went out that we had to decorate package and get to them. Uh, I saw, actually, I saw on Facebook, your baby cookies, like there was a box. Mm-hmm. Of de- did you decorate all those? Yes. We decorated those every, yeah. All of our stuff is homemade, um, from scratch. So like our carrot cake and our chocolate cake are my grandmother's recipe. So we try to keep it as fresh as possible. We try to get as, uh, high ranked or best products as possible that we can. And so uh, when you, ex- if you do decide to expand, what does that, what does that mean? Uh, what does expansion look like? Expansion, more fridges. <laughs> That's really. Uh, you just well, need more capacity. We, yeah. Um, right now we are getting to the point that um, cakes are coming in that we ended up having to buy two more refrigerators and a freezer, um, which we did order a fridge by accident, but ended up being like what we needed. Um, Cause now we're filling up two of the industrial refrigerators with uh, cake orders and they're starting to get bigger with as in two tiers, three tiers, instead of just your regular one tier cake. Um, so more room and hopefully we'd be able to actually hire people. Cause right now um, all the owners, me my sister, my mom, um, are working there um, from, I get, mom gets there at six, I get there at eight. And then depending on what we have, we leave around five, six, seven. We've, I've ended up leaving at like three o'clock in the morning before. Yeah. Well, so, and you also could use a delivery driver. Yes. Not Uh, your husband. You need someone other than him. Yes. Other than him. Luckily enough, he has to work when we have to deliver. So I usually do the delivery for everything. Well, I don't know about about anyone else or people listening, but I am so ready for some cake right now. <laughs> um, did, you brought some carrot cake, I'm assuming. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for doing this. It was so fascinating. Oh, thank you. I'm truly blessed to be here. And now let's go find out a little bit more behind the scenes at Discovery Park of America.
Hello, I'm Andrew Gibson with the Education Department here at Discovery Park of America, and today I am with Casey Workman, who is the Assistant Director of the Aquarium and Wildlife, and today we are going to be uh, debunking some, some facts and myths about turtles. So my first one, Casey, true or false, all turtles live in the water. This is false. There is a difference in a turtle and a tortoise. However, here in Tennessee, we have a turtle, the eastern box turtle, who is not considered a tortoise because they will go into water if it's shallow enough. However, if you go drop it in the lake because you think turtles live in the water, um, it's going to end up drowning. True or false, turtles only eat bugs. This is false. Once again, with the box turtle, it's really cool to know that they eat a lot of vegetables and fruits and things. That's why people find them in their garden a lot of the time. So they are big old vegetarians. However, they do like to eat those insects also. And then we have snapping turtles that like to prey on fish and small mammals and small baby birds, things like that. True or false, turtles grow out of their shells. This is false. Um... Unlike the hermit crab that climbs out of his shell and goes and finds a new home, the turtle shell actually grows with them. So they start out small, and as they grow, the shell grows with it, and you can actually see rings like the growth of a tree. True or false, the box turtle lives within a mile of where you find him. This is typically true. Um, They do have a very small home range that they encompass their whole life. However, they might move if... The habitat isn't correct, so if their food sources drop or their water sources drop, they might move a slight distance away. But this is a big problem because a lot of people, they pick up a turtle, take it home, release it at their home, and box turtles actually have the instinct to go back to where they were born. So this is why a lot of them get hit on the roads. True or false, snapping turtles per square inch, pound per square inch, have the strongest bite power. This is false. Um, Snapping turtles don't actually have a very strong bite. The damage is all within the beak on the front of the nose. True or false, you can pick a turtle up in the wild, take it home with you, and turn it into a pet. This is false, especially in Tennessee. Since 1974, our health department had a law put in place that you're not able to own turtles at all. However, throughout the United States, there is the public trust doctrine that was put in place by Teddy Roosevelt saying that animals belong to the public, which basically just means that if you take any animal out of the wild, you're saying it's yours and not the public's, and that is against the law. All right. Well, thank you, Casey, for uh, sharing so much about the turtles. Uh, I know I certainly discovered something new today. I hope our listeners did too. Uh, We want to thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast, and we hope to see you here at Discovery Park of America real soon. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.